A crisis at the border. A record number of migrants arriving to the U.S.-Mexico border seeking asylum into the United States. It's putting a strain on resources both on the federal and local levels. Right here in the Rio Grande Valley, bridge wait times have become longer to the point where city officials have had to provide gas to vehicles waiting for hours. A tent facility in Donna opens to house undocumented immigrants as a result of overcrowding in detention centers. Local groups gather donations to help shelters who have opened their doors to the migrants on their journey across into the United States. Now, RGV Congressman Henry Cuellar and State Senator John Cornett propose a solution which they believe would not only bring more resources to the border, but would bring them to the areas where they are needed the most. It's known as the Humane Act. It stands for helping unaccompanied minors and alleviating the national emergency. It calls for 600 CBP personnel and at least two immigration judges at each of the regional processing centers. The goal is to help process the asylum cases faster and alleviate the stress on the immigration system caused by the influx of migrants. We've been told by everybody who's paid attention to the problem, from Jay Johnson, President Obama's Secretary of Homeland Security, uh, to the former and current uh, Border Patrol and uh, DHS leadership, that they can't solve this problem on their own. They need Congress to pass legislation to update the laws and allow better processing of individuals seeking to come here, including more staffing and infrastructure. That's why we're introducing the Humane Act which will make the necessary reforms, and it includes provisions both from Republicans and Democrats. It's, there's a lot of efficiencies, and this is what uh, the Senator and I are trying to address. Uh, do we have a humanitarian crisis? In my opinion, just like I said in 2014, uh, yes, we do. Uh, you know, we have a lot of people coming in, uh, and in large numbers, in fact, just um, couple days, what was it, about 400 people in the apostle sector said, here we are, uh, come in. Uh, and this is why I think a wall doesn't work, because they'll come to the riverbank and say, here I am, and they'll, they'll ask for their asylum and their credible fear. Um, so you have people coming in because they figured out that all you have to do is get to the U.S. border and just ask for asylum or credible fear. But not everyone is on board. A version of the Humane Act was introduced by Senator John Cornyn back in 2014. It's now introduced again, but some pro-immigrant organizations, such as La Unión del Pueblo Entero, also known as Lupe, believe that this version may cause more harm to those seeking asylum. That's because they believe the Humane Act would speed up deportation in a way that would not give asylum seekers adequate time to prepare or have qualified representation in court. I met with a Lupe spokesperson who followed the 2014 version of the Humane Act, which also had similar representation criticism with the national attention on family separation. The organization worries that such legislation may become a hurdle for the immigrant community. This, among many other issues, is why they continue to monitor legislation like the Humane Act today. This bill is anything but humane. This bill is something that would fast-pace deportations of people who are in very, very vulnerable situations. We're talking about children, uh, children, families that are are fleeing violence, fleeing uh, situations where you know none of us should be uh, should be uh, put back into and they've arrived here, they should have a chance to tell their stories, they should have a chance to be able to, to, to really be heard uh, so, they're, they're, so that, they're, that we aren't fast-tracking their deportations back into harm. A big difference in this 2019 version, an emphasis on keeping families together. Almost a year ago, the Rio Grande Valley was on the national spotlight as detention centers were said to separate migrants and house them in various facilities across the Rio Grande Valley. So this is a situation that's not going to go any away anytime soon unless we take a hard look at the conditions uh, the, that are causing so many people to flee for their countries. Um, and, and the reality is that if we, if we try to just force more people into detention and deportation, all we're going to be doing is eroding, eroding the rights of, of these children and vulnerable people. Uh, and, in, and enriching uh, the pri private prisons that are, that are making a killing off of this operation. In 2018, Representative Cuellar successfully secured almost half a billion dollars to help Central American countries, addressing what he calls the root cause of migration, 
With the 2019 Humane Act, the Texas leaders are looking to speed up the process for determining what legitimate asylums get to stay. We know this will not solve every problem, but it will have a huge impact. First of all, I think it will send a message that uh, there's not free passage into the United States as long as you show up at the border uh, because you've simply overwhelmed our capacity to deal with the numbers involved in any sort of orderly or organized way. Day in court, in fact, we want to move the day, uh, the immigration uh, day a lot faster. And, you know, let the immigration judge decide. If he or she says they stay, bienvenidos, or whatever the language might be. It's not, it's not only Spanish. Uh, but if, if he or she says you got to return, then they got to return. They're arriving to, to our border, arriving to our country uh, to, to, in many cases, reunite with family uh, that is already here, reunite with sponsors and other support networks that they already that already exist here in the country. And we should be uh, we should be mounting a civilian response that is humanitarian based, and uh, instead of a law enforcement response that tries to speed up deportations. Coming up, a one-on-one -on -one interview with the Texas Workforce Commission representing labor. We talk about the current and future workforce of the Rio Grande Valley and how it compares to the rest of the state.